What is this Andyman AS2200.D? Let's find out. Imagine this, another cheap monoblock off of eBay. This case, Andy Man Direct, $104.34. You might say, who the heck is Andy Man? I thought the same thing. It had all these battery jump packs for your Veeam Hickle. I was like, well, what in the world has this got to do with car audio amplifiers? Went to their car audio section, and sure enough, they have five different amplifiers at the time of this video including the one we're going to look at, the AS2200.D, which says 1500 watt subwoofer, class D, car, all that junk. Well, we'll check out the description here. It's a mini digital Bluetooth, low distortion, DC-AC power, suitable for home use, even karaoke? You know how them sound waves go? Mm -hmm. This is not a Mickey Mouse program! All jokes aside, the amplifier shows a rating of 550 watts at 4 ohms, 950 watts at 2 ohms, or 1500 watts 4 ohms bridged. This is a monoblock amp, but maybe they're talking about something else. We'll check it out once we get the package open. Let's go ahead and do it. Here we can see the owner's manual that comes with it. It's in English at the beginning and check at the other side from the Czech Republic. That's very odd. I don't know if I've seen an amp like that before here in the US. Comes with the remote base cable as well as a remote base knob, extremely basic. Just has a potentiometer and has a 3.5 millimeter connection on the back. That's all there is to it. A couple mounting screws to mount your base knob and base on. Looking at the exterior of the amp, it reminds me a lot of a SCAR audio amp. Definitely the color and the heatsink design and the way the terminals look on one end. However, on the opposite end, we have a lot more features than SCAR amps typically have. It has power protect LED input right and left. Also a different connection for in and out. Bejig. What the heck is Bejig? Well, Would you look at that? Yeah, there's a few more blemishes. <laughs> typically amps that have linkable capabilities also have a switch for master and slave. This one does not. We also have a gain control, min to max, subsonic 17 to 50 hertz, bass boost 0 to 18 dB, low pass filter 250 down to 50 hertz, and also phase control 0 to 180 degrees, and the remote socket, plug in your base cable. On the opposite end, we have 4 gauge for the 12 volt and the ground, also have a remote terminal for turning on the amplifier, and we have dual outputs. This is a monoblock amp but it has two outputs for a dual voice coil subwoofers or multiple subwoofers. That's always helpful to have multiple outputs. They're approximately eight gauge. As far as the measurements, 36, 24, 36, oh, oops, uh, 15 inches by 6.3 inches by 2.17 inches. And ratings, four ohms, 550 watts, two ohms, 950 watts. We don't have a one ohm rating. It has a Brigidia rating, but we're not sure even what that means or if that even works with this amp. So we got the amp all hooked up. You can see here we're using zero gauge to four gauge for the power input to provide the maximum power needed to power this beast. Let's fire up the good old SMD to more engineering amplifier dyno. On the left, you're gonna see the RMS power output and watch. You're gonna see the ohm load in the middle, the voltage of the dyno on the right, as well as a remote indicator to give us efficiency numbers. This here's my favorite part. <laughs> First test here of our favorite part, four ohms mono is rated 550 watts. Here's a couple of examples. Two ohm dual voice coil subwoofer wired in series gives us four ohms. Or if you use two four ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in series parallel, that gives you four ohms as well. Let's try certified test first, a 1% THD, 40 hertz test tone. Rated 550, we get 532. So honestly, not that far off from the rating. What about uncertified? Can we get to that 550 watt rating up to the clipping point? Let's see. Wow, statistically we're there. Look at that, 549 right at 14.4. So I would say this amp is pretty accurately rated. Even the fact that they can't spell when they put on some of the silk screening. Dynamically, yes, yeah, so we get the 550 easily. 558, 14.48. Let's check that efficiency using the Fluke. 
and we measured around 72% at 4 ohms. Definitely in the range of acceptable, but not what I'd call great. 2 ohms mono rated 950 watts. If you use a single 4 ohm dual voice coil subwoofer wired in parallel, gives you 2 ohms. Or if you use dual 2 ohm dual voice coil subwoofers wired in series parallel, you can get 2 ohms. So let's run the certified test first to 1% total harmonic distortion. And came up a little shy, 890 watts at 14.36. Let's see if the clipping test, which is the uncertified test, gets us up to 950. And here we go. No, looks like it's not quite going to make it. 936 at 14.28. Statistically, that is within the range uh, of definitely making its rated power, so it's close. What about dynamically? Can we get it? 950? Yes, we do. 991, can it bust a thousand? I think that's what we're going to get. 991 at 14.42. Efficiency, 69%. It's dropping a little bit here at 2 ohms. Finally, we'll do the 1 ohm run. No ratings are provided. And if you want to check the link in the description, I'll leave a link to a subwoofer wiring calculator so you can see what the options are for 1 ohm. Certified test first here, 1% distortion, 1,200. 47 watts at 14.26 volts. Let's try that uncertified test. Takes us up to the point of the clipping, clipping, clipping. Get a little bit more. 1,379 watts at 14.11. All right, what about dynamic? Has it got a dynamic bump? Ooh, yeah. 14, 15, 55. There you go, over 1,500 watts, 14.32. Now let's check the efficiency. 66% at 1 ohm. Here are the results. Just showed all these tests. You can pause this if you want to see things individually. And what about the tests below 1 ohm? Well, if you watch all the way to the end of the video, including after the credits, you will see some additional tests. You know how it is if you're an OG. Now what about power and subwoofers? Let's look it up to the quad box, see how it sounds. Showing the power during these tests can be deceiving because there are amps I've used that have less power shown here than this one and actually sound as loud or louder to me. But in this case, we got 1125 watts at 1.9 ohms. That's good power for this budget amp. Now let's find out what's inside this $100 class D piece of Chinesium. Here we go. Let's take the bottom off. There are eight different screws. I have to pry it up like Richard. And then we can see the internals. Here we go. Let's do the beauty shot. You can see capacitors there. You can see the choke. You can also see the two transformers. 2200 microfarad, 25 volt capacitors for the input filtering. Then we have 2200 microfarad, 80 volt for the rails. Now what you may notice is that there are two that are black and the other four are kind of a bluish color or green so definitely they um, kind of scraped the capacitors from whatever they had available, which kind of concerns me for an amp like this because you really don't know exactly what you're getting uh, when you have different components like that being used. Now you may notice I said before SCAR, the RP1500.1 and this one look pretty similar dimension-wise and everything else. So I took a gut shot of the RP1500 and this one, and there's some similarities. They're not exact though. The SCAR has two big caps. This one has six smaller ones. Now let's talk about the pros and cons. See what I think here. First up, it's inexpensive. Amazing watt per dollar. It does include a base knob. Not the best one I've ever seen, but hey, for 100 bucks, what do you expect? The amp says it's linkable. I don't know how. I didn't buy two of these, so I can't try that out because it doesn't have a master slave switch. Dual speaker outputs, and is it low ohm stable? We'll find out later. Things could be better. It does have mixed parts. The manual and the website info is horrible and in most cases not correct. It has a turnoff thump with my subs, so I did not like that. 
And again, is it worth going cheap? When you buy an amp like this, you're really taking a risk because you don't know if you're really going to get support, if you have issues with your amp, if they're going to be around, if uh, you know even they still make the same model. So what I would say is look for something like the JP8, which is uh, currently on sale for 150 bucks, but usually at 199 does about the same power total as this amp has a much better bass knob and you know it's down for sound they're not going anywhere so that would be my suggestion but anyway thanks again for watching until next time big d i'm out of here the website and the manual don't really specify whether this amp is really rated for one ohm but we're going to try 0.8 anyway because it seemed to handle one ohm okay certified test first we get 1,293 watts at 14.27 at 0.8. So it looks like it's somewhat stable. It didn't go into protect or anything. Let's try uncertified up to clipping. Again, 0.8, 40 hertz. See what we get. Getting close to 1,500, 1,474, but we pulled 181.5 amps of current. What about dynamically? Let's see what we get. Over 1,700, 1,762 watts. 14.25, big D, got more tests to do. And the phone's ringing. Dummy. What? I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. Through the system, I don't want to be a slave. I've been doing shit